Hi, I'm Richard Dennis, Chief Economist at the Australia Institute. And I'm Matt Grudnoff, the Senior Economist at the Australia Institute. And this is Ask an Economist, where you get the chance to send in your questions to us and we put our economist hats on and try and answer them for you. So Matt, our first question today is, so what on earth is the OECD? Why are they writing big reports telling us what to do with our, uh, our economy and our tax system and, and, and what's their advice? Yeah, so the OECD is the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. Okay, it's a bunch of countries. They're mostly developed rich countries. In fact, they're all developed rich countries. So the OECD countries is almost like an international statistics agency, if you like. And they, uh, they, they gather together all the statistics, mostly about developed countries, but they also put out report cards on um, how economies are tracking. They uh, put out a report card on Australia that um, basically looked at how we were going uh, and um, how we were doing economically, how we'd done um, post-pandemic and that sort of stuff. And what they found was, is that um, inequality is a big problem at the moment uh, and it's getting worse in Australia. Hang um, on, that- so, so the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the global rich country think tank, uh, reckons that inequality uh, is getting worse and that we should do something about it. This is yes. this is heady stuff. It is, it is. Now, you might remember there was a bit of a controversy that uh, Matthias Cormann basically got flown around during the pandemic on the uh, Australian taxpayer's dime in order to lobby to become the head of the OECD. You mean so- our former finance minister, the guy who introduced tax cuts for high-income earners, and, and opposed increasing unemployment benefits and caused a lot of inequality. You mean now that he's running the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, he thinks the exact opposite is a good idea? Exactly right. And it gets even better. They also wanted us to do more on climate change. So they were, they were unhappy with the amount Australia is doing and they thought that we could do more. Wow. Who'd have thought that a leopard would change its spots? I mean, it's really? as if they- it's as if that guy will say anything powerful people tell him to say. Almost as if. Now, what did the report card actually say? Well, basically it said that inequality is bad and we know that um, because uh, we know that the countries that are more unequal, that is they have higher rates of inequality, actually grow more slowly than countries that are more equal. So if we want to increase our economic growth, then reducing inequality is a great way of doing that. So, but we've been told for decades we kind of have to choose between giving rich people incentives and growing the economy or being nice to poor people uh, and ruining the economy. And and are you saying the OECD are now like the IMF and the World Bank and, and perhaps even economists as esteemed as yourself and myself have been saying for decades that's not the case, but Matthias Cormann now runs an outfit that says it is? Absolutely. It's almost as if incentives work on poor people and rich people, (laughs) not just rich people. Who would have thought? (laughs) Um, But what they found was, in particular, they took aim at our capital gains tax discount. They thought that it was massively too big. That is, we tax everything, uh, all forms of income. So whether you earn a wage, whether you uh, own a business and get profit, whether you get dividends, however you earn an income, basically you're, you're, you're taxed at your marginal rate, except for one thing, one thing only, and that's capital gains. We tell you half half your rate. So basically, if you get a capital gain of $100,000, we say, let's pretend you didn't make $100,000. Let's pretend you only made $50,000. Oh, that must give people a lot of incentive. <laughs> yeah, to, to speculate in assets, for example, to buy residential housing, for example, and not be concerned about how much they're getting rent, make a loss on that, but happy to make a capital gain in the future. Right. I didn't the like OECD that. Is, and the OECD is saying, hang on, what, what's always looked like a crap idea from up close looks like a crap idea when viewed internationally as well. Yep, and not surprisingly, rich people make a whole lot more out of capital gains because they're the ones that own expensive assets than poor people. The other thing they had to go at was our superannuation tax concessions. They said that they were way too generous, particularly to the top end. And we know that superannuation tax concessions, the more you earn, the bigger the concession is. It's not just the more you earn, the bigger your super is, so the more you get. It's also for every dollar you put in your super, you get a bigger tax concession. Wow. So it's as if they've been reading the Australia Institute's reports for the last 15 years. (laughs) It's amazing. Uh, Um, Well done, Matthias. Yeah, well done, Matthias. 
as I said, also, they had a go at our, uh, our lack of um, um, effort on climate change. They thought that we needed to do more, that we could do more if we wanted to. Why is the OECD concerned about climate change? Because climate change is one of the biggest threats to both the economy and economic development around the world. Uh, as well as being uh, an enormous environmental problem. It's, it's really only in Australia or a handful of other countries where there's this sort of economy versus climate action. Uh, conservative governments around the world, Boris Johnson. Uh, you know, Boris Matt, Johnson, he's a Tory, isn't he? Real correct. conservative. That's, yeah, I mean, he must hate climate change action, right? No, he's European, so he actually just thinks it's a good idea. Angela Merkel is no lefty. Uh, so, yeah, around the world, people understand that a, a avoiding climate change is not just uh, important for protecting the environment, not just important for protecting national security and the well-being of people. It's also a great way to avoid catastrophic economic consequences and you know the the latest storms to lash the us uh you know it's not that long ago that cyclone katrina wiped out an entire city in new orleans the the economic costs of letting climate change rip are enormous and sadly australia is one of the last countries in the world pretending otherwise but of course you know here we are the third largest fossil fuel exporter in the world there are plenty of people here don't want other countries uh, to reduce their demand for our fossil fuels. The other big part they had um, was they actually did praise the, uh, the government, the federal government, for their response to the pandemic, particularly their, their fiscal response. So they thought that the amount they spent um, and, and the speed at which they spent it had a big part in um, reducing the impact of the pandemic recession on Australia. Hmm. Oh, well, well, we agreed with them on that as well. There must have been something in there you didn't like the look of, Matt. Um, they did talk about um, they thought that income taxes, which is uh, the most progressive tax and, and our biggest tax, that Australia was too reliant on, on income taxes. Um, and, and the Treasury used that as, um, uh, believe it or not, used that to say, well, you know, that's why our stage three tax cuts, which almost overwhelmingly go to high income earners, that means the OECD is supporting that. So OECD said inequality was bad. Government used that to say, well, our um, tax cuts, which are going to make inequality worse, the OECD is agreeing with us. And, and if we're thinking about the sort of the revenue pie, if the OECD is saying we're getting too big a slice from our income tax system, wouldn't it be true that if we got rid of our capital gains tax uh, concessions, if we got rid of the superannuation tax concessions, and if we introduced a carbon price or a wealth tax, wouldn't that reduce our reliance on income tax? Yeah, look, wealth taxes in particular, um, estate duties, those kinds of things, which other countries in the OECD have, which Australia does not, that would certainly not only reduce our reliance on income taxes, but it would also increase um, uh, the, uh, or reduce, sorry, inequality because wealthy people would get taxed more and poorer people would get taxed less. So we have to pay careful attention to the language. When the OECD says we're relying too heavily on income taxes, they're not saying you should cut income taxes. They're saying you should collect taxes from a whole bunch of other sources like the rest of other countries do. Yeah, look, Australia is a very low tax. We're one of the lowest tax countries in the OECD. We could certainly increase um, things like wealth taxes um, and, and, um, and, and therefore increase the total tax take to be more in line with the OECD. The other thing that the OECD said is that uh, we're, we're not very reliant on the goods and services tax, on what, what they call indirect tax. Um, and, um, and they suggested that we, either, uh, that we could broaden the tax base by, uh, by increasing the number of goods that we might tax with the GST. You mean like private school fees and private health insurance and financial services and things that were deliberately excluded from the GST by John Howard that are overwhelmingly consumed by high income earners, but for, for some strange reason got, got left out of the GST when it was designed? The GST is actually generally quite regressive. That means that um, uh, poorer people take, pay a bigger proportion than richer people. But if we, uh, if we put it on the things you just mentioned, um, then we could absolutely make it more progressive, not less progressive. So all up, the OECD seems to give a ringing endorsement to the Australia Institute's policy agenda over the last 15 years. 
Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, we, we largely agree with almost everything the OECD um, um, does. Um, we now leave it to the Australian government to decide whether or not they want to make changes based on this. Right. Well, Matthias Corman, you've come a long way. Maybe he needs to pick up the phone and, and call his old buddy, Scott. <laughs> He's a bit busy. Thanks for watching Ask an Economist. And for more content like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, australiainstitute.tv.